Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. Uh, we've got a question from a fellow boater asking about uh, some issues with a batter isolator. So this boater sets up the stage. Uh, so in this instance, uh, we've got a boater that has two battery banks, a starter battery bank and an electronics battery bank. And that battery bank is charged from an alternator via a battery isolator. Now, what this boater notice is that when his engine is running, they don't really notice that much current or recharging happening on their electronics bank. And remember, the electronics bank is recharging via a battery isolator. So the first thing to realize is that not all battery isolators are the same. So some battery isolators are efficient and some of them are inefficient. And what you're looking for is, are they modern with FETs or are they made with diodes? Older battery isolators um, have, and you can tell them apart from the newer ones because they have basically a heat sink on it because diodes allow current to only go one direction, which is what you want with a battery isolator. You don't want um, the electronics battery or the engine battery to see one another, but you want the alternator to be able to recharge both. So in order to have two things connected together but separate, you either do it through a battery isolator that is with diodes or you do it with a battery isolator that is FETs. Now, the challenge uh, with the older style battery isolator, the diode one, is that it would actually cause a about 0.7 voltage drop. And you're thinking, oh, 0.7, not a big deal. I got 12 volts. What's 0.7 on 12? Well, the reality is that when you're charging a battery, your max voltage, if it's a 12 volt battery, is around 14.4, maybe 14.6. And that's at max output of the alternator. If you're taking that and you're at 14.4 and you do minus 7.7, so now you're at maybe 13.7 instead of 14.4, and that's 13.7 without line loss. So, you know, you're obviously your alternator is not on top of the battery, and depending on the size of the wiring and you might be losing 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 volts of line loss between the alternator and the electronics battery bank. And so all of that is aggravating things. It's just making it worse, right? You've got your alternator output, you're losing 0.7 out of that. Then you're losing 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 out of line loss. So effectively, you're trying to recharge your battery at 13.4, maybe 13.5. Well, what are your loads on your electronics bank? Some electronic banks are 5 amps, 7 amps, 10 amps. And if your alternator is only a 55 amp stock alternator or a 35 amp alternator, and you're running that through a battery isolator who's chopping off 0.7 volts just to provide that feature, right, on top of line loss, you're going to have a device that effectively can barely recharge your electronics battery bank. And that happens all too common. So the first thing that you should consider if you've got this setup or challenge is to replace your older type uh, battery isolator with a modern FET-based uh, battery isolators because those battery isolators are way more efficient. You might lose 5%, but you're not going to lose 0.7 volts. And so that's one of the common things we do when we come on board and we're doing electrical audits. And if we see a um, older type battery isolator, we're going to recommend to the owner to consider replacing it with a modern FET type battery isolator where most of all the power coming out of the alternator is redirected to the battery banks and is not lost um, in the device itself, hence why they have this huge heat sink. So consider that and then also think about when we're idling, right, or we're having our alternator at lower RPM output. So depending also if it's a gas or diesel, but where you're not all alternators output the same amount regardless of your RPM. Generally, there is a correlation between RPM, which affects the rotation of your engine, but also affects the rotation of your alternator, obviously with the pulley ratio being different, but it still affects your output. So if you're idling and you've got a diesel engine and you're idling around 1200, 1300, 1400 RPM while you're maybe trolling, or going slower, your alternator output might not at all be what you expected. Even if you have a stock 50 amp alternator, when you're trolling at those speeds and your engine is rotating at only 1200, you're going to see only a fraction of that output. And so it's sort of like almost these layers where every time someone is, you start off thinking you've got a 50 amp alternator, but now you've got 50 amp running at maybe low output. 
So maybe instead of running max 50, it's only outputting 20. Oh, but now it's 20 amp output because you're going slow. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to run it through a battery isolator. Well, the battery isolator might take another like two thirds of that power. So now my engine, my electronics battery is only seeing like five to 10 amps charging. Oh, wait. I've got loads on my electronics. I got chart plotter, I got a sounder, I've got maybe a stereo, I've got maybe a radar, maybe I have an AIS. All those loads, I've got a crab puller or a pot puller or whatever it is. And now all those loads are actually gonna exceed the charging capacity of your alternator on your boat. So one way to do that is to replace that uh, battery isolator, which is inefficient. And realistically, the other reality, and some of us have this, is that sometimes we want to run our engines slow for a long period of time, but we can't because we're just not making enough power. So be cognizant and have a battery monitor on your electronics bank and say, wait a second, the voltage, I'm going in a negative over time. Now, I can do go in the negative for maybe two hours, maybe four hours, but maybe I won't be able to do it for seven or eight hours. And then it does happen. I hear it all the time. You know, I'm running my engine and my engine, my batteries died when the engine was running. Is my alternator damaged? Well, it depends. And that's the question. Is your alternator output exceeding all the loads on your boat at any given time? And that's not always the case. So a great question from a fellow boater. And as we can tell, everything appears easy at the outset, but sometimes it's more of the devils are in the details. Thanks for watching. And if you've got any feedback or input on a battery isolator on your boat, please share. Because remember, sharing is caring. Thanks for watching. So if you're curious, again, go on our website and find out more answers and solutions with this sort of setup. And thanks for asking. And thanks for all of you for listening and tuning in.